What's up, everybody? This is your boy Uber Hikari, aka the Nerd Nigga, here to bring you another video with no frills, just the analysis. And today I'm going to be bringing you season three. I guess this would be season three. Season three, episode two review of Spartacus Vengeance entitled A Place in This World. Alright, so first let me preface this video by saying by stating the obvious. This video is late as hell <laughs> being uploaded on a Friday basically amounts to a Friday evening, uh, when Spartacus is coming on later tonight. So uh uh, sorry for the lateness. Uh, I had some other priorities to deal with. One involved me doing, um, having a, a prior commitment that I couldn't get out of. Um, and then once the week started, I had to get back into school mode. And, you know, I'm still getting acclimated to school this semester. I know we're like three weeks in, but I'm still getting into the mode where I, I have to, you know, be mentally prepared to spend, you know, anywhere from three to four hours from you know five days a week doing homework so uh, and also uh, since this is uh, I mean I do episode TV show episode reviews but this is also an anime and manga channel and since that's primarily what I'm known for I have to give some priority to that as opposed to um, my TV episode review so like I said sorry for the for the the obvious lateness of this episode review but hey uh, since today is Friday and Spartacus comes on again tonight, uh, at least you'll be able to see me twice. <laughs> to see me do two reviews of Spartacus in what's looking like a 24-hour period. Uh, that is if I can download the episode because I don't have a television in my dorm room. So, yeah, let's get into this this episode review. All right, so like uh, most of my TV show episode reviews, this will be broken down into two parts. The first is the summary um, that deals with the plot lines, and the second part is the analysis of the episode. Um, and in this episode, there were three um, uh, really overarching plot lines or subplots, if you will. The first involved um, Spartacus and Crixus and um, the sort of, you know, band of warriors that they've put together. And uh, they go to the house of, I forget the guy's name, but they go to, you know, basically his house or villa or what have you. And um, they basically liberate all the slaves there. Um, and they chose this house because of Navia. Uh, if you remember in the first episode, Crixus uh, had, you know, come by some information uh, suggesting that Navia was at this house. So they decided to attack this house um, to look for Navia as well as, you know, free the slaves that were a part of that house. And uh, this plot line deals with the various repercussions of their actions. <coughs> uh, excuse me for that. But I know it may seem at first glance like, you know, they're doing, you know, such great things. They're liberating all of these slaves. Um, but there are some some serious repercussions to, to their actions that it seems like they they weren't prepared for um, before they they undertook this this little, um, you know, this this rebellion or this revolt. Um, some of the former slaves are, are, you know, somewhat reticent to accept their new status. Um, which basically means that they still have that slave mentality. And since they don't know what it means to, you know, be in connection with their humanity, or since their humanity has been, you know, disfigured by the experience of being a slave, they're, they're very reluctant, very reticent, very, you know, apprehensive to accept their new status as a freed individual. Um, and this is, you know, shown by the fact that a former, you know, slave, um, who was, you know, basically being, you know, raped by his master, um, try, attempted to assassinate Spartacus. Um, so that comes out very clearly as one of the repercussions of them, you know, uh, freeing these slaves at this, this house. Um, and some members of, of the, this sort of, you know, group or band or, I really don't know what to call them. I guess this political movement would, would be an apt phrase. Um, these guys, you know, don't know how to handle the responsibility of, of being free. Um, they're singing, they're getting drunk, they're harassing the women. Um, and so, you know, part of, part of what is happening here is that they don't know how to handle the responsibility that comes along with their new status as a freed individual. And, um, Spartacus is trying to build up an army of slaves, but 
um, it looks like it's, it's going to be you know very difficult because it's hard to transform a slave into a warrior and to put that fire in them that allows them to be courageous in the face of such daunting odds. Um, the second plot line that this episode deals with is Animaeus and his search for purpose. Um, the title of this episode is A Place in This World, so obviously A Place in This World and Purpose, you know, sort of go together. And uh, we get to see his backstory, which is just really sad. I mean, it's, it's, it's really sad. Um, and he was basically captured, enslaved, and sent to the pits. Um, and in the Spartacus world, the pits basically equal hell. Um, it's worse than being a gladiator. And th this happened when he was a child, which makes it all the more, you know, just basically tragic. Um, and we get to see how, you know, Bodyotis's, uh father, uh, I forget his name. Uh, he probably won't be appearing in the series anyway after this. But basically, Bodyotis's father finds Animaeus in the pits. And uh, he takes him in, he, he purchases him, he brings him back to his Ludus to turn him into a gladiator. And um, there's this whole thing about, you know, Animaeus not having a purpose and trying to find his purpose for fighting to be a gladiator. Um, and basically the conclusion that he comes to is that he wants to be a gladiator and to fight in order to um, honor the house of Badiatis. Um, and so when the house of Badiatis falls as a result of, you know, uh, Spartacus, Spartacus's, you know, slave insurrection or slave rebellion or revolt, um, Animaeus is left without a purpose. Uh, he's no longer Doctore. And um, so this, this sort of backstory that we get provides us with the information we need to sort of understand precisely why it is that Animaeus seems to be so ambivalent towards the movement. Um, and there's also some, some, something interesting that happens with Animaeus at the end of the episode, but, you know, I won't spoil that for you guys. Although most of you who are watching this preview probably, this review probably saw it already. Um... And so uh, part of the episode also deals with the fact that Animaeus now finds himself back in the pits. And um, it's strongly alluded to that his purpose is now to, to kill himself. Um, there's, there's a very strong allusion to that. Um, so, you know, we get to see him as, you know, basically being a, a, a somewhat tragic figure, um, given the fact that he no longer has a purpose. He's no longer Dottore. And it seems as if, you know, he doesn't want to live anymore. Uh, the third plot line uh, in this episode deals with the return of Asher and his sort of teaming up with Lucretia, uh, which I think is going to be a very, very fruitful uh, development as we go forward throughout this series. It's, uh, you know, Asher as one of the those characters. I mean, I personally don't like Asher, uh, but he's so good for this for this series because he provides a dimension of, you know, uh, Spartacus is, you know, known for its violence, its gore, its sex, those sort of things. And and Asher's character sort of uh, adds a dimension of, you know, political machination uh, that sort of, you know, evens out the, the series. And so it's not just totally lopsided in, in the uh, direction of violence and sex and, and that type of thing. Um, so this plot deals with their sort of political machinations, uh, those of Asher and Lucretia. Although it's it's um, it's clear to me that Asher is using Lucretia to gain favor with uh, Gaius Glaber, um, but it's not clear to me that Lucretia remembers who Asher is. She may remember who he is, but it's not entirely clear. It's sort of ambiguous at this point, so we don't really know. Um, and so, uh, part of what they're doing is they're manipulating Gaius Glaber, um, through his belief in the gods. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what the implications of this, but it's very interesting to see how the, the writers of this show are, are using the sort of mythology of, of the Roman gods here. Um, because Asher is now using the mythology of the gods to sort of manipulate Gaius Glaber um, when the gods are supposed to be the ones who are, um, you know, in charge and they grant favor or disfavor. But now we see how people can be manipulated through their belief in the mythology of the gods, which I think is a very interesting development plot wise. So now on to the analytical uh, aspects of this episode uh, review. Um, the sort of the opening scene in, in this episode was just um, with Animaeus in the pits. It, it was really sick. And, you know, uh, even for me, you know, 
I, I have a pretty, you know, you know, sturdy stomach. I, I have, you know, I can I, I can take my share of gore, but I was eating when I was watching, you know, this episode and and it just was like it was it, it really sickened me to my stomach to see this. Um so Animaeus is, you know, a kid fighting against a grown man uh in the pits and he's been beaten up, you know, pretty badly. He's he's been beaten up pretty badly. And uh, he manages to gain the upper hand against this man, and he kills him. But the way he does it is just, um, even by you know Spartacus standards of violence and gore. I mean, he is just stabbing this guy like in the face and in the neck, and and you can see the stab wounds uh, in his face and his neck, and the blood is just gushing up, and it's sort of like covering Animaeus. And and to imagine like this kind of situation from the perspective of someone who is basically a child is just, it's 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 really it's really disgusting. It's 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 pretty sick. Um, so this opening sequence, I think, is pretty symbolic of the corruption at the heart of the Roman Empire. And I know I've mentioned this before in my previous episode review, but I just want to, you know, elaborate on precisely what I mean by this. Um, the arena, you know, the gladiators, the pits, the slaves, um, in some way, they're all symbolic of, you know, how Roman society devalues human life. And we get to see this, you know, through Animaeus's backstory. And it's particularly heart-wrenching for, um, for us because, you know, Animaeus is a character that we've, you know, I mean, it, it, for me at least, um, is a character that I've, I've grown to like, someone who I respect, and someone who was initially presented as a character of, you know, great courage and integrity and honor. And to see how, you know, Roman society um, is so corrupt in the way that they devalue human life and the way that they use slaves and dead bodies as the foundation of their society and civilization, it really puts this in, in, in an entirely new perspective. Um, at least for me. And it really shows, like I said, the corruption that's at the heart of Roman society and at the heart of Roman civilization. And um, through Animaeus's backstory, we get to see how he was sort of transformed um, into something that resembles a humanity. I mean, uh, not humanity, something that resembles an animal. And we get to see how his humanity was disfigured through this process of becoming a slave and being put in the pits and being, you know, transformed into a gladiator. And uh, it's really sad because Animaeus, um, you know, like I said, this is strongly alluded to that, you know, since he doesn't have a purpose anymore that, you know, he wants to kill himself. And, and the fact that he'd rather opt for suicide rather than embrace his own freedom and rather than try and fight with Spartacus and Crixus to sort of assert his newfound humanity and to sort of assert his newfound status as a, as a free individual is just, you know, really heart-wrenching. Um, and so this, this process of, of slavery that we've been introduced to, whether it's, you know, like I said, through becoming a gladiator or being put in, you know, the pits or being made into a slave or being, you know, uh, the victim of sort of ex, uh, sexual exploitation, um, we, we, we get a, you know, a real understanding of how this process of slavery works. That is the, the process of transforming a human being into an animal um, through Animaeus's backstory. And, and this is how the, pr the process of slavery works in general. The process of slavery works by stripping, you know, a human being of their humanity, stripping them of their identity, stripping them of their purpose, and then transforming them or turning them into an object to be used as the sort of foundation for someone else's identity. And so the, the sort of questions that are now being raised by, you know, this show is, um, what does, you know, humanity mean? What does it mean to be human? Uh, what can freedom mean under these sort of circumstances? And, you know, how can a slave have a purpose? Since, you know, the, the obvious question that this episode raises through the title, you know, A Place in This World is, you know, what does it mean to have a purpose? You know, how can you have a purpose under, you know, circumstances in which you're either enslaved or are constantly having to fight for, you know, fight in order to be recognized as, you know, an equal human being with, you know, self-worth and dignity. And so these sorts of questions that are raised by Animaeus's backstory are sort of intimately tied to, to, to the formation of a political movement, which, you know, Spartacus and Crixus have, you know, started through the slave rebellion and the slave, you know, insurrection.
So now let me, you know, uh, just talk about, you know, um, Spartacus and the political movement that he started and, you know, the, the political formation that he's created and the sort of, you know, paradox of, you know, this political movement. Um, so the, the paradox is essentially this. Um, we now see that, you know, Spartacus and, you know, all the warriors are having to engage in this constant battle, this constant fight, this constant struggle to assert their humanity. Um, but at the same time, they have to do this under a, in, a, in, in a situation in which people either, one, don't recognize their humanity, or two, um, they don't have the power to make them recognize their humanity. Um, so on one hand, this political movement is about how um, these slaves are embracing their new, new status as free individuals, and they're asserting their humanity. But on the other side, we also know that... Um, this political movement probably won't win out in the end. Um, you know, most of us know how this is going to end, and we know that it's probably not going to end well for Spartacus and the other warriors. And so, you know, it raises, you know, these these complex questions about, you know, how does one assert their humanity when people don't recognize their humanity, and two, when they can't force people to recognize their humanity. That is, they don't have the power to make people, um, you know, respect their respect their you know uh their humanity their their worth and their dignity as a human being um so um part of you know what's what's happening here and part of what the writers are trying to explore um through this sort of you know tension about humanity um or this sort of theme or motif of you know humanity is um what they're trying to, you know, get at is that there is a, a, a real strong relationship between political movements and, you know, how political movements function and their relationship to the formation of, you know, um, how can I put this, uh, a new level of consciousness or um, a new level of, you know, identity as a human being. Um, so political movements, you know, function by trying to... Um, create or or to to you know form a new consciousness for the people who are involved in that political movement and so consciousness is the consequence it's the result of actions and beliefs and those actions and beliefs are the basis for forming a new identity it's not as if and, and you can see this at the at the the beginning of this episode like i said um when the slaves are sort of reticent to embrace their newfound status like you you can't assume like you can't assume that someone has a certain consciousness um and that all you need to do is remove you know the remove you know the the people who hold the power and that they will readily embrace this consciousness or that this consciousness will just naturally form it's naturally you know take shape or naturally form itself with this what we really understand um, what this episode really forces the, the viewer to understand is that consciousness is the result of actions and beliefs. It's the result of engaging in struggle. And so um, this motif of, you know, purpose and fighting for purpose um, uh, becomes really central, I think, is going to become really central to uh, the rest of this series. And um, you see this motif, you know, sort of in Animaeus in the way he had to fight in order to learn what his purpose was. Um, and so Spartacus likewise had to, you know, engage in this struggle to figure out what his purpose was. And now he's trying to sort of, you know, um, get these slaves to sort of fight in order to figure out what their purpose is and to form a new level of consciousness for themselves. Um, and so they all have to have, you know, um, their own personal reasons for fighting, um, but they have to believe that their dignity and that their humanity is something that is worth fighting for. Um, so at one level, it's, you know, they have to have personal reasons for fighting, um, but at another level, they have to believe that their humanity is worth fighting for, and that's how they get to a point where um, they, can, they can have, you know, a, a purpose in the broader political sense of purpose and in the broader sense of what it means to be a human. And so I think, you know, overall, um, the writing in this episode was just absolutely excellent. Um, and, you know, part of the reason why I think that is also because they're not shying away from the sort of gender dynamics of the situation either. Um, if Because, you know, 
if the part of the, the argument of this episode or part of what's being explored in this episode is that, you know, in order to, you know, find out what your purpose is, you have to fight. You have to engage in a constant struggle. Um, and that involves, you know, you know, implicating yourself in certain power relations. Um, but women don't fight. Women don't become warriors. Women are not warriors in this in these circumstances. They're not gladiators. We don't see them in the pits. They're not taking up arms in this new political movement that's been started by Crixus and uh, Spartacus. And if women don't fight, and fighting is the way that you find out what your purpose is, then how do women find their purpose? And this was a very interesting question that was raised um, because, you know, there was this scene where a woman was, you know, basically, you know, gave up her body in exchange for being protected and in exchange for, you know, other favors. And um, the woman who did this was, you know, confronted by Mira about this. And um, she said, you know, some of us, you know, don't have the favor of Spartacus and, and we don't have the luxury of being protected by him. And so we have to trade the only coin that we have, which is, you know, their body. And so there's this question raised by um, the writers about, you know, just how far... Um, Spartacus is going to take this idea of equality. I mean, will it extend to, you know, gender equality in terms of, you know, men and women? And so um, uh, will it extend to, you know, getting rid of, you know, forms of, you know, sexual exploitation uh, that involve women? Um, it's, you know, obviously they want to get, get rid of the, you know, sexual exploitation of men. That's something, you know, that has to do with, you know, the construction of one's masculinity. Um, but will that also extend to the sexual exploitation of women? And so, you know, the writing, like I said, the writing in this episode was just, you know, very good. Excellent. Um, so this, this episode is a 10 out of 10. And I find myself being, you know, pleasantly surprised by Spartacus um, because this series has really, really grown on me. Um, when I was watching um, Spartacus, you know, a couple of years back during the first season, Blood and Sand, uh, I sort of, you know, got to the, the, the final episode of that season. And when Spartacus, you know, at the end, he gives that, you know, famous speech. Um, I have done this, I have done this thing referring to the slave rebellion and killing everybody in the house of Batiades. He says, I have done this thing because it is just. And I, I found myself like, oh man, maybe Spartacus is a little bit deeper. Maybe it's about more than, you know, sex and violence and gore and bloodshed and uh, cool battles. And I, you know, now I find myself being, you know, pleasantly surprised by the development of this series and the direction in which the writers have taken this series. Um, because they're, they're raising some, some very, very good questions about, you know, the conscious, about humanity, about humanity and the relationship to purpose, about political consciousness, about, you know, you know, uh, equality and gender relations, um, that I never expected to be raised by this series. And, um, so, you know, this series is, 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 like I said, a pleasant surprise to me. And this episode in particular, uh, I found, you know, very, very good. Uh, so again, sorry for the lateness, and uh, um, the next the next episode review of Spartacus will be on time. That one will probably come out. Um, I be, I think depending on you know, like I said, I don't have a, te a television in my dorm room, so I have to you know download uh, every episode. So depending on on the availability of this um, this uh, episode, whether or not I can download it, uh, Spartacus will be out. Uh, as early as, you know, sometime tomorrow morning. So around three, four, five, six, uh, tomorrow morning, which is, you know, Saturday morning. Uh, so this was your boy, Uber Hikari, AKA the nerd nigga, just brought you another video with no frills, just the analysis. Peace and uh, have a blessed day.